We all know there are numerous cells that are involved in our defense system. But do you know where they're derived from? Well, a great majority of cells involved in mammalian immunity are derived from precursors in the bone marrow and circulate in the blood, entering and sometimes leaving the tissues when required. And exceedingly rare stem cells that are commonly called as pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells, or HSCs, persist in the adult bone marrow at a frequency of about 1 in 100,000 cells, and it retains the ability to differentiate into all types of blood cells. Hemopoiesis has been studied either by injecting small numbers of genetically marked marrow cells into recipient mice and observing the progeny they give rise to, in the case of in vivo cloning, or by culturing the bone marrow precursors in the presence of appropriate growth factors, which is observed in the case of in vitro cloning. Proliferation and differentiation of all these cells is under the control of soluble or membrane-bound growth factors that are produced by the bone marrow stroma and by each other. Within the cells, these signals switch on specific transcription factors, DNA binding molecules, which act as master switches that determine the subsequent genetic program, in turn giving rise to development of different cell types that are known as lineages. Remarkably, recent studies have shown that it is possible to turn one differentiated cell type to another by experimentally introducing the right transcription factors into the cell. This finding has important therapeutic implications, that is, in the case of curing genetic immunodeficiencies. Remember that most hemopoietic cells stop dividing once they are fully differentiated. However, lymphocytes divide rapidly and expand following exposure to antigen. The increased number of lymphocytes specific for an antigen forms the basis for immunological memory. Hematologists recognize many stages between stem cells and their fully differentiated progeny. That is, for red cells, we have proerythroblasts, then erythroblast normal blasts, and then we get erythrocytes or red blood cells. The suffix blast usually implies an early dividing, relatively undifferentiated cell, but is also used to describe lymphocytes that have been stimulated, for example by an antigen, and are about to divide. 